ready to cool off a little bit. It's a bit warm, loud, and fumey. <laughs> so we're gonna fly to Medellin today. Check out inland Colombia. All right, let's go. We're traveling. <laughs> because today we leave on a flight to Medellin. We're gonna travel inland and go with our friends on the Wolfhound. It's so um, hot. <laughs> but it's also really hot here and super noisy. We've been on the dock here for about two weeks and it is just a party nonstop here in Cartagena. <laughs> It's gonna be nice to get away, get up into the mountains where it's a lot cooler, uh, hopefully quieter, we don't know, but I'm packing up. Warren's just fi finishing up some stuff on the computer and we will be heading out later this afternoon. Ready, babe? Let's go, so excited. Yeah. Cool. Another adventure. i another adventure. Let go to Medellin. Where are you going? We are gonna go to Medellin. Ah, Medellin? Yeah. Uh, how many days, man? Six, Six days. days. Six days. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you, we have limes and tomato and some small peppers. Would you use those? Okay. Alright. Thanks for watching the boat. Bro. Okay, wait. I was there. I checked there. I checked there. I checked there what? Okay. All day. You're a good All way, man. You're a good man. Okay. We'll see you when we get back. Okay. 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 Alright, brother. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Okay. He's so sweet. Off on another adventure, we were confident that both Evelias and Wolfhound were going to be well looked after for the next six days. All right. Thank you. Oh, woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> We snagged some cheap flights only days before and boarded our flight to Medellin. Just an hour and 15 minutes later, we would be landing in the Colombian province nicknamed the City of Eternal Spring. Known for its temperate weather, nestled in the valley about 1,400 meters above sea level. Arriving the night before, we drove down from the hills and into the city, where we were immediately taken back with how big it looked. We booked into an Airbnb in the uptown neighborhood of El Poblado, located in the Medin's city center of the eastern side of the Aruba Valley. We're going to um, the central on the metro, and then we're going to walk around Medellin, and then we're going to zone 13, which is uh, where all the baddies, all baddies used to live. <laughs> Naughty. Um, and and then we're just gonna shop. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what we're doing today, I guess. Shopping was certainly not on our agenda. Exploring the city was, and after seeing the size and distance we needed to travel to explore it, right, we were glad it. to discover that Medellin is far more innovative and easier to get around than we had expected. Medellin's metro oh. is Colombia's only commuter rail line, consisting of a total of 30 kilometers of track stretching from one end of the valley floor to the next. For us water-based navigators, we were what felt like fish out of water trying to adjust in the city life, and the advances of the modern day transportation seemed more challenging to us than normal.
The city center was teeming with people, street carts and vendors selling everything from cockroach condos to pirated porn DVDs. And every block had a whole street selling the same items, each one with a better price than the next. ourselves in a whole new place, far from the one we had been living for the last year. Our senses have changed while well on the boat and the city felt so foreign to us. Medellin packs a punch of a city twice its size. It sprawls north and south along the valley floor, the slums or barrios hanging on the upper reaches of the hills, and the metropolitan public works drawn inspiration from lands overseas. The people of Antiquia, or Paces as they call them, are true to their roots, and for that, Medellin is far different from the coastal city of Cartagena. Yeah, just wander around, see what we can find. It's, but it's a big, big place. place. Yeah. We wandered into the Museum of Antiquia, where Colombia's most famous artist and sculptor was featured. And his works were spread across the entire city. So we needed to know a little bit more of artist Fernando Botero. His style depicts figures in large, with an exaggerated perspective which represented some of the political criticisms or humor of its people at the time. So we've been walking around Medellin all day and we're entering Commune 13 which was up till about seven or eight years ago the most dangerous part of Medellin which is, was in those days the most dangerous city in the world. Commune 13 clings to the mountainside and has undergone an impressive transformation in recent times. It is now considered safe to visit. Before 2011, the Comuna was a fortress of criminals. During the 80s and 90s, the particular commune was a prime location for the violent drug trafficking organizations to use the poor, sprawling hillside barrios as a transit route in and out of the city. And unfortunately, things still didn't work out well for them in 2002, when the president had launched an operation to raid Comuna 13, in turn becoming a brutal and controversial event. Since then, the government has set about improving the hillside commune, rebuilding the brick barrios and community centers for the people for a better way of living. But not surprising to us, after seeing the entire city from above, access was a big issue for the people. So the installations of electric elevators and the metro cable cars to access the city below became a whole new freedom for the people and brought a shift in the local mentality. Kids played on the street again and local artists felt safe enough to go out and brighten up their neighborhoods. The result was the creation of one of the most colorful communes in Medellin. The area surrounding the new outdoor escalators is covered with murals and graffiti, with bright colors and street art decorating walls that were once riddled with bullet holes. Our final day in the city was spent using all the public work systems. We saw Medellin from many perspectives, soaring above like birds in the metro cable cars and cruising through various communes on the local streetcars, we only got a glance at the city's true soul. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. What are we doing? Update us. All right, so we're gonna leave uh, Medellin. Just outside the city, there's a place called Guatape. Guatape. An hour? About an hour or so on a bus. 
it's like three dollars to go there and we're gonna stay in Guatape which is this beautiful lake in the countryside and then there's this massive rock that sticks out of the ground and it's okay. the yeah. most colorful colonial yeah. town in Colombia okay so really slumming it mimosas for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> perfect timing travel day thank you we hopped back on the metro to the bus station on the other end of the city and once again was amazed by the advances throughout. We arrived to a bustling transportation hub where at first the overwhelming feeling was as if we were in the Latin version of Grand Central Station. But surprisingly we had found the kiosk in bright colors to our next destination. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So we're in this town, Guatape. Beautiful. Guatape. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It used to be not that long ago in a different location, but they have uh, made this area into a reservoir. Mm -hmm. So they moved a lot of the residents into this newer section of the town. And the unique thing about this place is it's got these murals. When they decided they needed to flood their old city, their old village to come to the new village. All the villagers here, they brought their windows to make it easier on them to rebuild afterwards. And along with the windows, they have these um, depictions in front of their home or their residence, kind of displaying what they were as a tradesperson. Or what they are. Or what they are. So um, it's considered one of the most colorful places in Colombia. While most of that basic Google regurgitation is true, we later found out that Guatape was built in memory of the old neighborhood La Aldea, which was flooded by the reservoir in 1983, and the town was remodeled and restored with the most significant elements that the neighborhood had. Those of them being the beautifully handcrafted depictions of their previous trades and or favorite pastimes before the flooding. That morning, we had the whole town to ourselves. We woke up early enough to wander the brightly colored streets with just the birds beginning to sing and before they were once again flooded with people spending their last days on the long holiday weekend.
<laughs> Last day in Guatape. And it's Monday, so there's not as many people here and it's early. Very we're gonna fun. go oh, here's a tuk -tuk. Perfect. We're gonna go clean. Climb. Climb. We're gonna go <laughs> climb. But it's seven hundred and twenty stairs. Straight up. Straight up. I mean it's not a ladder. That they do zigzags, but the stair won't go straight up. Just as the villagers were waking, we were able to flag down a few Colombian tuk-tuks to tow us all the way up to the foot of this giant rock. <laughs> this now popular tourist attraction was likely a result wow, from a weathering cool. erosion fracture that surrounded the bedrock of granite. Located just outside of Guatape, visitors can scale up the 200 meter rock on a staircase built into one side for one of the most stunning views some would say in the world. <laughs> we did it, Lou! <laughs> Perfect. Oh, a bar, thank God. Kind of. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Click on the bell to get reminders of new episodes, and also consider being our patron to get some exclusive content from WeSail. Drinks on your boat, what time? Yeah, what time are you gonna